Welcome everyone, welcome to oh, Review It Yourself. Happy Gopher Day. Oh, who, who invited Boss Lady again? It's Lou from Pods Like Us. She's here I to help me. <laughs> yeah, right. She's here to help me review New in Town, uh, the 2009 rom com film with everyone's favourite damsel in distress. Do you not say damsel in distress? Well, I mean, it's, it's not rude. Uh, What's her face? Ready, Zellweger. Um, welcome to Later with Luke, episode five. And th- this this was a pleasant surprise after after the lake house. Then we had the fantastic sleeping with the enemy. I was thinking, uh, I really need this to be good. Um, and the first scene, I was like, I was that confused because there was no, like, it didn't put me to a DVD menu. The DVD just kicked straight into the film. Yeah. So the first scene, I was like, is this an advert? Like you know, like you know, like the old DVDs used to give you like a trailer, yeah, beforehand. Because yeah. like this, this gave me the the classic Federation against copyright theft, uh, like advert, like you wouldn't steal a car, or like I was thinking, oh my god, I want this DVD, and then it kicked straight into the film, and I was thinking, hang on a minute, is this is this actually is this actually like is this the film? Uh, and I was like, oh, okay, it t- it took me about two minutes to get the tone. And I was thinking, oh, it's it's goofy, right? Okay, I'm I'm with you. The tone's very interesting, isn't it? Oh, lost you there for a minute. Oh, sorry. So my, I was just saying, it took me about two minutes to to realise, like, oh, okay, yeah, this this is the film, and oh, okay, it's goofy, but I'm I'm with it type of thing. I, I know what I know yeah. what the tone is. So we'll kick off with everyone's favourite. Well, I thought, well, our favourite segment anyway. So we'll read mm-hmm. out the uh, <laughs> we'll read out. So Reddy Zellweger is this <laughs> yeah. So the front cover has Reddy Zellweger is new in town. She may not be where she expected to be, but she's warming up to the possibilities. Oh, how clever! And yeah. the ratings on the front say from OK, OK magazine. I presume it just says OK with an exclamation mark. It says it will make your heart melt. And then Bella says a must see. Dot dot dot. A slick romantic comedy. Okay, fair enough. The back, uh, the the back cover. Like this is a bit of a long one, guys. So just just relax in. I can't actually couple. see you. Oh, that's on purpose. I, I, I I'm oh. absolutely knackered. And my hair's all over the place. I thought. Oh, don't worry. Uh, the where is it? Oh, yeah. So the the back cover. So it's a bit of a long one. So strap in for this one. Get get your cup of tea and enjoy yourself. Um, award winning actress Renée Zellweger stars as Lucy Hill. A high-powered executive in love with her upscale Miami lifestyle. Seeking to snag a big promotion, Lucy agrees to move to a remote... Jesus, spit my teeth out. Lucy agrees to move to a remote... There's a double space there. That's just sloppy for a start. So Lucy agrees to move to a remote Minnesota town to oversee the restructuring of a blue-collar manufacturing plant. So for anybody who's not American, blue-collar is kind of like working class type thing. But of course, we know it's America. They don't have class. Uh, no, no, I mean, don't. I don't, I don't, mean, <laughs> I don't mean they don't have class. I mean, like, a class system. Um, it's like a factory apparent, workers, apparently. construction yeah. workers, labour, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. It's uh, supposed to white collar offices and things. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I don't get it. It's, it's, it's a very literal, very American. Uh, after enduring icy roads, freezing weather, and a chilly reception from the locals, how clever. Uh, she, that, it doesn't have the how clever bit in it. She soon warms <laughs> up. Oh, Jesus Christ, who wrote this? She soon warms up. To literally the small warms t- up. <laughs> yeah, literally, yeah. Uh, oh, that bit where she's like, I, I may be a city girl, but I know how to turn a fire on. Where's the <laughs> switch? And they just look at her like, oh, God, you're an idiot. Um, so have a look. After, after enduring icy roads, freezing weather, and a chilly reception from the locals, she soon warms up the small town and its people. Well, that, especially the town's handsome union representative, in brackets, Harry Connick Jr. What begins as a job assignment becomes the best thing... Hang on, hang on, hang on. What begins as a job assignment becomes the best thing ever to happen to... Okay, well, just read a bit weird. In this heartwarming comedy that proves that the warmest people are often in the coldest places. Mm. Fair enough. Um, It will make your heart melt. Yeah. Bloody hope so. Um, 
<laughs> so, yeah, I mean, so how come you picked this one? Well, actually, yeah, we, we, yeah if I anyone think, wants to I talk, thought you picked it. <laughs> did I? Did you pick I it? I think you recommended it in that first episode yeah. we did, and then yeah. I got the I DVD and enjoyed it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so the, one of the main characters in it, apart from Renée Zellweger, is Siobhan Hogan. You'll know her face for her face from films such as Forrest Gump, Halls, and she also plays the husband of Vincent D'Onofrio, who gets taken over by the alien in Men in Black, the first one. And she's the woman that's like, I know Egger, and that wasn't Egger. Uh, she's that woman. Um, she's got a very distinctive voice, hasn't she? She has, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, she does. But I, I, don't, I don't mind it. Well, they all do, because they're all putting on the accent, aren't they? This side of Minnesota. And... Yeah. Accent. I mean, apologies for anybody who's from Minnesota. I'm not sure how accurate, accurate it is. <laughs> I do. I do watch a YouTuber who's from Minnesota, and I kind of can hear bits there. And yeah. I do. I have heard how freezing cold it is. Um, Actually, I've got a thing about that. Uh, yep. a bit of trivia. Um, it was so cold during the filming that the camera could only run up, run for up to a minute per take to prevent the heat generated by the camera's electric motor from cracking the lens. And it got as low as minus 55 degrees centigrade. Lovely. Mm-hmm. That's so, a toasty, yep. eh? Oh, absolutely. Freezing. You, uh, so, Brenny's Zellweger's character at the beginning, she lives in Miami. She's in, she loves it. She's corporate. She's unsympathetic. She's very, very driven. And then she gets sent to Minnesota and they're like, oh, yeah, you're going to go downsize this plant, drop the... Drop the work boss by 50% and basically get, you know, um, what's the other thing to say? Well, oh, yeah, um, like get this new, like, mechanical robotic stuff working, these new machines. They'll basically downsize and, and, and change the workforce from, from being predominantly human to being kind of technology. I think there's a lot of films like that. I mean, I've got another favourite film. I mean, this one is sort of loosely set at Christmas, isn't it? And, well, it's not, I wouldn't call it a Christmas film, but lot of films that you, you watch they seem to be at christmas time don't they and um, there's another one i think it's christmas in love it, um, and it's basically the same idea where um this corporate chap goes to this small town where they make uh, what they're called christmas kringles for like pastries and he goes to downsize the workforce and replace them with machines and and it's it's basically the same sort of story as this one to be honest Mm-hmm. Yeah, the story's not the more. I mean, it's not the most. It's 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 a very by the book rom com, mm-hmm. very kind of traditional story, not particularly original, but it does it well, and I think there's something to be said for that. I um, like the fact that she starts off being a really hard nosed C CEO or whatever, and um, and then gradually the the longer she's there and gets to know the people. Um, she becomes part of the community and she warms to people and she changes her attitude completely. Yeah. And again, it really Zellweger, I mean, yes, it's similar to Bridget Jones. Uh, just, I mean, obviously she's American. She uses a real accent in this rather than a, yeah. um, a British one. So, it, I, but I did like the fact that she, she's good at what she does. She does some of the pratfalls in here. She does some of the surprise. Like, I love the bit where... She's very composed and she gets to the airport. She's pushing about 800 bags yeah. on, this, like, oh, on the trolley. The yeah. Yeah. And she walks and she's like, how bad can it be? You just hear her like, yeah. oh my God, <laughs> you mother. And then the door's shut. <laughs> and she like pushes herself back in. Uh, yeah, I thought that was like, I really Don't enjoyed that. Don't you find that, though but... there's a few moments like that that are very, very Bridget moments? Oh yeah, especially the bit where she gets, she crashes the car. And she falls over drunk, and then she falls off the balcony. Well, it's not a balcony, sorry, Jesus, that sounds horrendous. She falls off like the little what they call them, like the porch, like doors, yeah, and she yeah. falls off the <laughs> into the snow. Then there's a few times where it's like, oh yeah, that's very, very Bridget esque, but she does it yeah, well, so yeah. it don't bother me that that much. Uh, and again, again, right, another film where <laughs> so she meets, uh, she, uh, she meets the. Oh, what's her name? She's played by Siobhan. Blanche. She meets Blanche, and it's like, "Are you a scrapper?" And it's like, "A what?" And it's like <laughs> yeah. someone who scrapbooks. I've got some uh, trivia about that later on, so we'll, we'll get to that. 
Because uh, I again, DVDs, love them because they are behind the scenes. So I've got a little bit of trivia later on. That I, oh, let's get all my trivia off the uh, off the internet. <laughs> uh, some of it's there, but obviously not all of it. Um, but it says you're still young, relatively. Uh, and then it's like yet another film where Renny Selberg's egg expiry date are, are brought into question. It's like leave the poor girl alone. <laughs> like what yeah. is this impression? Every time she's in films, to be like, oh well, you know, you're still young. <laughs> uh, yet. Like, better get cracking, type thing, so. <laughs> um, and the whole, like, oh, the bit that's the most bridgey for me, and maybe it's because she uses the same laugh, but it's where it's where she said, it's where Blanche says to her, have you found Jesus? And she says, I didn't I didn't know he was missing, and I really <laughs> laughed at that bit. Love that. Yeah, I really, really enjoyed that bit. I think one of the funniest bits for me, I think this is a bit Bridget-esque as well, um, <laughs> I laugh at it. It's where she goes to Blanche's for dinner, and she's in that top, and she's obviously very cold. Shall oh, we say? God, yeah, yeah. She's, and she's the way just... they're looking at her, she can't understand why they're looking at her in a really funny way. I think that is, it's totally, almost totally Bridget, and it's one of the funniest things. <laughs> it's just hilarious. <laughs> and, yeah, um... and she's like starts blowing down the top, trying to warm herself up to her. <laughs> Um, to why they keep looking at her yeah yeah um what is it uh, oh yeah and then she goes to she goes to the the office and it it doesn't strike up very well with people she's not great with the people uh you got jk simmons as like the foreman harry connick jr is the union rep i think he's i don't know if he's a volunteer firefighter or a part-time firefighter or what but, but he's like the union guy for the factory as well and I didn't know, looking at this, like how much of a like massive like singer Harry Connick Jr. is. Like he's massive. Oh, oh he's I always liked his singing. Yeah, I love his singing. I always liked his singing. Well, is I, it, I, he's a top notch actor as well. Oh well, yeah, yeah, I mean, you see, Nick, the guy who's nicknamed the sorry ass truck guy, he was he plays Ted Mitchell, um, and his debut was in Memphis Belle, nineteen ninety. Seen that? He, I love that film. He, oh, so do I. He also voiced Dean in the Iron Giant. Is it Harry Connick Jr. in Memphis Bell as well? Yeah, he's he's he's, yeah. The, he's the tail gutter, I think, the rear gutter. Yeah. Um, he plays he 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 voices Dean, uh, the kind of hippie, uh, in the Iron Giant, and he also and, and I, what I recognised him from because he hasn't aged at all really. Uh, he plays Jimmy in Independence Day. Uh, that's the pilot who's best mates with um, Will Smith's character. He's like, he's like, Stevie, this is a wedding ring. That's Harry Connick Jr. <laughs> um, and yeah, I was like, I really, I thought he was really, really good in it. Um, and then there's there's a little bit of like back and forth where she kind of says to the the, the guys like, oh, this drivel about losers who drink beer and drive pickup. Oh, no, that. Sorry, no, that's the that's the. That's the bit where she has the dinner, isn't it? And she starts saying about because mm. yeah, stereotypes. Very, yeah, because he's talking about his daughter. Who I think is about fourteen or something, yeah. and he's saying about how, and she's just started to kind of have boyfriends and stuff like that. Marv has passed a note. Yes, um, <clears throat> Harry Connick Jr. is also in a really cracking film with Sigourney Weaver called Copycat about serial killers. No, I did read that when I was looking at the trivia, but I haven't seen it, so I might have to give that a go. That's really that sounds good. a good one. Actually, That's I've got you know that chap you're on about called J.K. Simmons. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, well, he's a, um, apparently well, it was a bit of a large chap in the film, shall we say? And he actually didn't have a fat suit. He put on forty pounds for that role. Yeah, uh, we've all been there. I just have, I, didn't get, <laughs> I didn't get paid for it, unfortunately. Um, <laughs> The, oh no, but he's quite light. He's quite a quite a skinny guy usually. Well, not skinny, but he's he's like a regular sized guy. So yeah, it was surprising to see him with with you know quite a bit of a gut. But he says that in the behind the scenes stuff, especially when they uh, the scene where they film the tapi where they're trying to get this tapioca machine worker where they like hit yeah. each other with it. And he said like, oh, that was his opportunity to show like. Because he's like, actually oh, that... uh, made people have a bit of a, if there was a bit of a run on tapioca after that film, if people rushed out and you know bought loads of tapioca to see what it was like. 
much. Well, to be fair, it's my it's trivia. It's like being in was... hospitals or you as a kid, isn't it? Well, I've never had it, um, but I, I'm not a fan of that consistency of food. I mm. don't like rice pudding because of the consistency. I don't mind the taste, but I'm just not a fan of the consistency. Yeah. And tapioca is similar to rice pudding. It's not made with rice, it's made with a part of tapioca, these little seed things. Uh, mm. But it was served in British school meals. And I was never a school meal kid. Um, I, was a, I was always a pat, I was always a pat, oh, no, the, It's both, really. Yeah, the pat lunch kid, me. Um, uh, tapioca was served in British schools where it was affectionately, or not affectionately, nicknamed frog spawn. So oh, I yes. didn't yeah. think a lot of it. Um, yeah. And it can be, um, I think it could be lethal if it, it prepared improperly, because I think tapioca can be toxic. But anyway, um, yeah, it's very kind of American, I think. Um, so it's 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 kind of a, a pudding you'd find over there. Uh, well, see, it's different because when, when we say pudding, especially in the north, I, it doesn't just mean Yorkshire puddings, America, which is savoury. It means... Like uh, pudding pudding like, or yeah. um, jam roly poly or um, yeah, or sticky toffee pudding, yeah. jams, a sponge, you know, custard, chocolate fudge cake, yeah. Arctic roll. Oh, and so, <laughs> uh, yeah, I know what you're saying. So, a pudding for stop. us is basically just any kind of dessert, or yeah. as we also affectionately call it, afters. So, if you ever any you ever have a British person for dinner and you have your meal and they say, Oh, what's for afters? Mm. They don't mean they're, they're not being like rude, saying like what do we do after the meal. They're just saying, where did that come from? They're what just dessert? saying it means like cheesecake or oh cheesecake. God you know, damn. dessert. That's cheesecake. How you talking? Like yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, and and so that that's all we mean by pudding. So basically, um, whereas in America, pudding, like, and I know there's some like scrubs as well. Like a pudding is more like a a yogurt, des- not like a yogurt dessert, but like a Almost like a, like they have chocolate pudding, which is essentially like um, what we consider like a, not a chocolate mousse. Like a mousse. Well. Yeah, yeah, in a way, but they're not they're not moussey. They're like um, blanc. You know, like custard. No, it, well, oh, I'm trying to think of the right way. Like when we get desserts and it's like a chocolate. I tell you what it's like. I tell you what it's like. Do you ever have those ones as a, those yogurts as a kid that was chocolate or strawberry, dead thick, creamy. With like a layer of uh, like squirty cream on the top, like a layer of cream on the top. Yeah. That's like their version of a pudding. I don't know if they put yeah. cream on top, but that kind of consistency of like, of um, I make myself hungry. Anyway, um, <laughs> <laughs> like something you uh, get in your diner or something. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then we see that um, she, she goes down there. Um. She 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 doesn't get on particularly well. She makes this list of people that um I think she makes she, enemies of people straight away. Yeah, yeah, she's very much like there to do a job. She doesn't want to get involved with anybody. And uh she gets she ends up get given a scrapbook later on, and I'm like, oh Bridget gets another diary. <laughs> uh and then the but that JK Simmons is the foreman is very much like every time you got every time one of you guys comes, we lose jobs here. Like every time one of you turns up we lose jobs like and they, i think they know what's coming but they don't yeah. know the extent of it um and apparently that the and i love the where she they take the mick out of her um with the whole go for day thing at the bar and she storms out she's not oh happy. to get a day off i thought it was yeah, national yeah. ice fishing day no no that's the day after so the oh, joke wow. is saying it's go for day mm-hmm. and then you've jumped ahead of me but yeah, good job we're on the same on the same line there she yeah, says i forgot about go for day forgot about go for yeah. day yeah, that's why I started off with a go for day bit. I love that. Uh, the first, ice fishing day. <laughs> yeah, the first day of ice fishing is a state holiday in Minnesota, <laughs> apparently. Um, and then she's 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 like, oh, sod this, I'm going back. She crashes, gets stranded, and then gets very drunk. And I love the way she stumbles out. Obviously, who comes to rescue her but Ted? She stumbles out, and he's like, are you okay? She's quite clever, though. Like, as much as I said at the beginning, damsel in distress. She's very resourceful. She stays in the car. She keeps warm by like, booze. Which actually goes against you with hypothermia, but anyway. Mm-hmm. She puts up the um like I don't know what other like knickers that are red on her uh, like on a on a <laughs> aerial pole, yeah, yeah. So that's quite good. Yeah. And she stays with the vehicle because there's a bit like I love the bit where uh like she falls off a porch and then there's like these really 
Well, they're not subtle, but like the humor in it is like really like all oh, these sweet little, uh, this little country town where everyone knows everyone. And they're like, oh, people, I don't know if I can do the accent. I'll try. Oh, people freeze to death all the time out here. Most of the stupid ones, it's nature's way of thinning out the herd. And I'm like, oh, fair enough. Uh, and you're like, what, you mean that you guys are the smart ones? Like, <laughs> um, And then I've put down money versus homemade. What would you rather get? I don't know what I mean by that. Money versus homemade? Yeah, I don't know. Oh, yeah, so it means, sorry. So in terms of like a pudding, would you rather make one yourself or... Actually, I don't know why I've asked that. You'll want to make one yourself, wouldn't you? I probably t- I do tend to make... Imagine, I don't make a lot of puddings as such. I'm, I make more things like muffins, cupcakes and cookies. The odd pudding, like a crumble or belly butter pudding. But not, not so many puddings, but some sort of more baking, I'd say. Um, it's amazing Marv keeps such a keeps such a, a slim figure. figure. <laughs> keeps such a felt figure, yeah, because I'll tell you what, if I married someone like that, I'd be the size of Lee House End, I tell you. Uh, and I'd love I every tell minute you that I made um, I made spice rum cookies last week then. Oh, do you know what? I'm quite partial to a spice rum. Not in a oh, yeah. biscuit. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Don't yeah, mind me. Uh, I yeah. thought I'd have a bash. Uh, I mean Martin's got a bottle of rum. I think he, I think they bought it from at work for Christmas or something, and and I've, I've, I bought this little um, cookery book. It's called Cookie Jar from a charity shop. It's got all these um, basic and some more fancy cookie recipes, and it was in there. So I thought, well, I'll have a bash. Oh, nice. And yeah, see, very I, nice. See, I can't do the kind of uh, what's the other uh, like the kind of Malibu rum. I can't do that end of rum, no, but I could do the other. Yeah, no, but, but I can do like the lower end of, of like not the lower. It's end, a dark the other rum. End. Yeah, this one. Yeah, yeah, all nice. Yeah. I mean, it's, um, it's just about detectable. There's only two tablespoons in to bind it together, but it's it's just about detectable. But we made a joke, you see, about you know, don't get breathalysed after having a couple of them. <laughs> oh yeah, exactly. Yeah, don't be dunking them in your tea at work before you drive. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, so she um. Lucy gets given a scrapbook by Blanche. She helps Ted with his daughter and um, helping her. Oh, that scene where she's like, I Doing can't go hair. out. Yeah, yeah. She opens <laughs> the door and they're like, whoa, okay. Oh, is... no, the bit I really, I mean, apparently this film was, uh, there's a whole bit where, sorry, interrupting you. No, no, uh, no. There's a, there's a bit, uh, apparently the director left the movie halfway through um, during post-production because a dis of disputes between him and the producers because he wanted it originally to be uh, aimed at a more well aimed at a mature audience, and I you know I, I don't like that bit in the film where Harry Connick Jr. says to his daughter's date, "Whatever you do to her, I'll do to you." I don't like that. I I don't think because he says I don't think he means it as it comes across. Yeah. I just I think. Um, I don't know. <laughs> but it is one of those things I meant to say because it does feel like, especially the bit earlier on where she's called, it feels like they were going to take it down the more adult route in terms yeah. of comedy. But then obviously I think the, the the studios are probably like, no, no, if we take out a bit of the swearing and a bit of this and a bit of that and soften it up a bit, we can, I don't know, put it out as a what? What is it? It's a 12. It says contains one use of strong language. Yeah. Super low if a person is 12 years and over, not to be supplied to anyone below that age. So if anyone's supplying. The bonus features, deleted scenes, making of Pudding's Delicious Roll in New in Town and the fork out of scrapbooking. So there you go. Fun times. Uh, so yeah, it, you do get that feel um, that it was going to be slightly edgier when yeah. they pulled it back. And maybe that's one of the lines that if the film had been more of an adult, not more of an adult, more, more of a mature kind of comedy with Moss Ryan, maybe, maybe that would have not being so jarring because I knew because it's very much the whole thing of like you know I, I think his wife's passed away and then he's raising his yeah. daughter on his own and she's starting to date and he can't really cope with it but it's a bit after that where he says to her oh is it to Lucy like oh, I didn't mean it how it came across and she's like yeah that came across a bit yeah. she's like well okay uh, but I love the the scene after that where she stays over um they kiss for the first time and then it's a bit where she comes in later and he's like, be on for half ten. And then she comes in later on 
and they're like, it's them who jump apart. They're like the teenagers. Imagine that if it's happened. <laughs> yeah, and I love the way he's like, he's like, and, he, and he and he goes to grab the remote, he presses it, and he, he goes and he knocks this like box of pretzels, this little ball of pretzels, flying, and that really made me laugh. <laughs> and he's just there like. It's about time you're home. Like I, I've been sitting here all night worrying, and she's like, "Dad, it's not even half ten. Um, uh, yeah, I, I thought that was just. Do you think it's a bit of a bit of a trope that she's going to eventually fall for the um, for um, the character Ted in the end? Oh yeah, it's yeah, absolute rom com. But I mean, look at him for a start. I mean, there's not a lot of competition in you know the, the people she meets. And he, yeah, I, I mean, I don't know what about yourself. I mean, because like, did, did it? Because I know before, especially with different films, we've um, we've spoke. Oh, I meant to say, but before I was going to say, we've had different views on things. But before we got to that bit, I must remember because I was talking to the the lass I work with who loves sleeping with the enemy, and she said, and I was like, oh, we ne- I never thought of that. Um, she said, how much of like a psycho must the guy be to yeah. live in a house like that? By the sea, with somebody who's terrified of water because he knows, like she has to look out at him. Yeah, it's like that's that a good feeling point. of being trapped. Yeah, and no, I never thought of that, and I was like, yeah, no, no, I didn't. That's a good point. That yeah, is. Yeah, I like that. I mean, that's yeah. another like element of his control, really, where they live. Well, yeah, exactly, because like it's isolated, it's surrounded by. I don't think it's like completely surrounded by water. Like it's not an island, but uh, mm. it's very much at, you're out on your own, and she can't get away. And she's yeah, no, I thought that was pretty cool. But mm. anyway, yeah. um. The bit with, yeah, oh yeah, she's very insightful, honestly. And there's a bit where, uh, in this, where I was thinking, oh, yeah, so how does it land for you that whole uh, Harry Connick Jr. and Renny Zellweger's character? Does it, does it feel natural or a little bit? How does it feel? Um, in, in a way, I think it's tropey, but in a good way. I mean, it's obvious it was going to happen, but I think it's, I think it's a good thing. I think it's, it's nice that it's got like a happy ending sort of thing so I'm, I, I think if you're watching it you sometimes you're almost urging people to get together and and when they do it, it, it's great so I quite like the fact that they got together in the end actually yeah no it was, it was nice and of course there's the there's the wrench thrown in it at the last minute where she gets told by her bosses right we're closing the plant down completely it's more trouble than it's worth uh in management speak and she she fights for it, but she gets told no, no, like it's, it's not happening. And then Blanche finds the list she made like the first day she turned up of like people she's gonna sack, and yeah. she ha- and she really helped. Blanche was one of them, wasn't she? Yeah, right at the top. top of the list. She, she really helpfully lists it under dismissals or something. I'm like, who, yeah. who does that? <laughs> um, this is very yes. And then they all find out, including uh, t- is it Ted? And they're very much like right that like they yeah. don't talk to her for a bit. He finds her in the snow, and then it things start to thaw out. Sorry, um, yeah, and I, I love the bit where um, uh, so which bit was? Oh yeah, so uh, I like the bit where she gives a little bit of background to her character a bit more. That she says like her dad did man- maintenance at a plant, and she thought that he he ran the place because everybody used to come to him for advice. And um, he her dad said get an education, like it's the only thing they'll never take away from you. And then maybe one day you'll be the boss of a place that is so in a weird kind of way. It's always been kind of like her dream, you know, I mean, kind of in the back of her mind to be like that. Mm. And I think it very much celebrates like well, what we call kind of working class labourers. But, well, actually, not to be fair, I'd cover working class for anybody who would lose the home in a couple of months if they didn't work. But I won't get into that. But a blue collar in terms of Americans, it, it kind of celebrates that way of life, that, that kind yeah. of way of life that's... Yeah. I mean, like oh, the whole community, oh. the whole um, small town community. I like that in films where um, small communities come together and help each other out and they all pull together in a crisis and that sort of thing. Um, that way of life, it's kind of almost the, all, almost pretty much died out in terms of where you'd have like one factory or, or a mine mm. or something like that. that would, we would employ the whole community and the only reason the community was there was because of the jobs. And, um, and when those things go, the towns tend to die. Um, mm. in a way well yeah so anyway sorry go on <laughs> oh, sorry the, apparently the, the film actually mostly received really negative reviews from the critics 
Uh, what do they know? I mean, good God, the look at the crap that they say. It's just somebody's opinion, isn't it? Oh, yeah, who cares? Who I've cares? actually got a really funny, well, I don't know if it's funny, um, a continuity error. You know, at the beginning when she, when Lucy goes to Blanche's for a meatloaf dinner? Yeah. Um, at the beginning, when, when she goes to the house, um, it's a notice. I mean, I never noticed this when I've, I've seen it a few times and I never noticed um, notice that ev- what everyone is wearing and the table, etc. Because at the end of the movie, when she goes to Blanche's for another uh, meatloaf dinner, um, everything is identical to the first meatloaf dinner scene. Same clothes, same drink, same food. And the only difference is uh, Lucy being out of the picture uh, with an empty place setting at the table. Oh, that's that's a good bit of trivia. I never noticed. I never noticed that. I've seen, say, I've seen it a few times, but I've never. I yeah. never. I'm gonna to have to. Next time I watch it, I'm gonna be looking out for that. <laughs> yeah. See, see, is that a continuity error, or is it the fact that they probably thought, right, we'll film these at the same time, just take Renny's elbow and get out the shot. But well, also maybe they the just have that, the same food and the same drinks. Yeah, yeah. And, that's what anyway, you know. you know. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. You probably. But they're in the same clothes as well, and yeah. everything's like identical. So. I see. I think that's a good detail. But you could say a uh, continuity error or mm. uh, cl- clever. You be the yeah. judge. Um, I, I, I really like uh, the scene where she takes, uh, he takes her hunting to try and, because she sacks J.K. Simmons' foreman and oh, he yeah. wants to kind of get the dialogue going again. And uh, she ends up trying to go at the top. This was where's so something free. you can get dirty. Yeah, it was so, she's like, where's something dirty? <laughs> And that bit was so Bridget where she gets stuck. Um, she can't get the she needs the toilet and she can't get the zip down. Then he has to get this knife out, and I'm like, Jesus, someone came with one of them. <laughs> and basically, like, I love that bit. And he has to kind of pick her up, and he's he keeps saying it was stay still. Because I'm sure when you watch that back, I think she definitely I don't think she knows he's gonna be that thing we like that, like <laughs> move her that much. He's like, stop yeah. moving, and she laughs, but she properly laughs. And yeah. I think that was when he's kind of started probably, to laugh. Yeah. yeah, I think so. Um, and when you think about she... that, you know, you know, when she shoots, well, I don't know if it's probably after she shoots him, she, when she shoots him in the ball, doesn't she? But when she puts the shotgun, this is a, a mistake, when she puts the shotgun against the tree, um, the barrel of the gun flexes, showing that it's a fake gun. Ah, uh, well, there I didn't notice that either, to be honest. <laughs> probably didn't dare risk it with one. Didn't dare <laughs> no. risk it with one. Um, yeah, I, I, th- I thought that bit was really, really funny. She finally manages to go to the toilet and she, she puts the toilet roll on a branch and then all of a sudden she just like, she falls and she and you just hear this bang and she's just like, oh God. Oh, and then I love the bit the next day where he used to, like to take a bookshot out of his backside which I'm really yeah. laugh. And then later on where she goes into the factory and they've all put bullseyes on the backsides, haven't they? <laughs> Saying like, I wanted to say like, oh, the best shot, best duck shooter in wherever it is. Or whatever they're shooting, but yeah, man, yeah. Uh, well, it's the bit where after that scene, and they have like the cops are there, and that TV person's like, "Yeah, it could be a lover's vendetta, or the woman could be crazy." <laughs> and then you get, and you see, I was gonna say, but you, you see uh, Lucy getting breathalyzed in the back of the truck by the sheriff, <laughs> and you hear you hear the sheriff just go, "I'll be damned, sober." <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, uh, oh, dear. Yeah, that was really good. So, um, so yeah. So after that bit, they find out that she goes back to Miami for a meeting. They find out that this new protein bar that they've put a lot of effort into isn't selling. So yeah. they decide to shut down the plant. Then Blanche's secret tapioca recipe comes to the rescue, but she won't tell anybody what's in it. And they make this zapioca, which is kind of like a protein yeah. uh, pudding based on tapioca, which, which is, to be fair, very, very um, funny enough, given this film is what? 14 years old, Jesus. Um, it definitely has it definitely as if 2009 is 14 years ago. Anyway, they definitely have um they definitely have um it could be successful now because the whole yeah. rise in protein type bars is huge, even in terms of like Mars bar with protein, Snickers <laughs> with extra protein, and then you get extra peanuts for protein. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, and, and then the gamble seemingly pays off. It works really well. And she's offered this vice president position in Miami. Uh, and then she finds out that they're going to shut the plant because they're going to move production of this very successful uh, recipe somewhere else. 
they're going to lay all the people off. And she's like, no, I'm not having this. Um, and she she flies back. And I, I really like the scene where you see her high heels because you think, oh, is it another person they've sent? Or is it another kind of CEO? Uh, not CEO. Is it another person they've sent for the company and then you finally see yeah. it's her? And she decides to make them shareholders in the company with her as CEO. And I, I, I like that. And, of course, Harry Connick Jr. comes in. Uh, they have a bit of a kiss. Although he gets... I mean, maybe it's because it's cold, but I mean, and she's really high, but like his hair, he gets very handsy, not in a funny <laughs> way, but like his hands are like moving up and down her back. So I don't know whether she was cold sitting filming that, which no doubt she probably, probably. was. Probably. <laughs> um, well, I, I, like, I like the ending. I like how it all, you know, the plant was saved and you know, we'd lost the jobs. I like that it all worked out in the end. I like a, I like a good happy ending. No, I do. When it, it, it it's, it's nice, but as you said at the beginning, the trivia that I got, the the temperature was really cold. Uh, they talk about it, and the writers talked about how they wanted they wanted Snow to be a character. And even mm-hmm. though one of the one of the writers was from uh, Minnesota, he said that he was he thought a lot of it would just be done like in a back lot. He didn't yeah. expect him to do it all um, for Snow. And I did think as well, you know, it's no wonder films do do green screen stuff and and things on location because when it's this difficult to do it because yeah. they filmed it in uh, I think Winnipeg um mm, Canada yeah and they said it's just absolutely freezing and and you think well no wonder they take shortcuts a lot of the time because it's this difficult to film in real snow but yeah. it really does lend because you watch other films as much as I love the holiday you can see a lot of the snow like you can see it kind of doesn't look right whereas yeah. in this you can tell they're just on snow I think the only bit of major CGI in this is probably the cow that they put on the road that she swerves to avoid. That's about it. <laughs> I think so obviously you can't have a car drive a cow. So or a bull. I think there's a bit of a discrepancy about the. Um, the I wish I, I wish I'd have written it down now. Um, apparently somebody said that that's. I think it was it shot in November or something, and they said there wouldn't something like there wouldn't be that much snow around. That area or that time of year or something like that. I think there's a bit of a discrepancy about the about the weather and the snow. Someone's got far too much bloody time on hands, haven't they? Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, and they said that um, Rennie Zellweger again did her own Pratt Falls. They said she was absolutely brilliant. And of course, when they were filming in minus fifty, a lot of, uh, at the beginning of the film, she looks she's underdressed because she dresses for Miami. So they yeah. said they would literally have people just off shot waiting with like fleeces and hot drinks and stuff to basically the minute they said cut they'd run on and put because i mean it's one point she stood there in like a skirt and stockings and it's absolutely freezing <laughs> and of course as much as you want to do a film you don't want somebody to catch hypothermia while doing it yeah. uh, and a, and the the actress siobhan who plays blanche said that when they sent them the script they actually sent them a pack how to prepare for the cold winter like how <laughs> to prepare for the cold weather where they were filming it, and she said she threw it in the bin because she was like, for a part of America that's quite cold anyway, and she was like, oh, I don't need that. And then she said when she got there, and you know, people's eyelashes were sticking together, they got these, <laughs> what they're called nostricles, or icicles on their nostrils, <laughs> yeah. beards, mouths, that kind of thing. She said, oh, she 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 was tempted to ring her husband to be like, can you get that out the bin for me? <laughs> um, the director said that they used, because he's in the behind the scenes stuff, and he says that the the the, uh, the locals for the Carolyn scene were fantastic in the freezing cold. Well, obviously they're not used to it, but in the freezing cold, it, uh, the Carolyn scene because it's very, um, uh, like discussing it as respectfully as I can. Um, the, it's a very Christian film, isn't it? Like there's a lot of Carolyn in there. There's that yeah. you know it, it, you get the impression as I've no doubt of parts of America are where. The very religious, like you know, yeah. you do your blessings before your meal, your blessings after yeah. your meal. You, you know, God is like a a way of life in terms of like Sunday. You find that in a lot of films where they do that before dinner. Yeah, like say grace and stuff. I say, mm. don't I? So, um, so that, I mean that that was, a, but a nice scene where they're all singing and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, but they said that a lot of the time no acting was needed. Like the scene where they're behind the, the the four ladies are behind the stall. They said like there's not that Siobhan said that you don't have to act that you're cold, you just act because you know yeah, you, you, are, cold. you are cold. Yeah. <laughs> That's really cold. Um, 
the to the point where Siobhan invented a song called Sick of It, but it was just those three words. And she said at one point all the cast was singing it, like all the crew and everything, like sick of it, sick of it, that thing. <laughs> uh, but the 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 director and like the, the actors said that it and you can tell like they had a lot of fun making the film, like you can tell yeah. with these films whether and they said it was that kind of ridiculous, that cold and that hard for everybody that that it was like a big feeling of camaraderie and that they did it and they managed to get it finished. And uh because there's there's a scene where you see Renny Zellberg where she stood behind the car and she stood there and they're like, ready, we're about to go and they do the, the clipper board. And everyone moves out of the way and she stood there and she's just like almost manically laughing because she must be that cold. Yeah. Um, and it, that's definitely, you do get that kind of euphoric rush sometimes when you are very, very cold. I know sometimes when I have open water swam in the, the winter months, um, you've right. got to be careful. Mm-hmm. Don't, well, yeah, you've got to be careful. So I don't, I don't recommend it. If you've never done it before, I can't swim. Uh, <laughs> no I, chance of me doing that. <laughs> but it does give you like a like a euphoric, like your your laugh. Your body doesn't seem to know what to do. It's yeah. that cold. You've got to laugh at the ridiculousness of it. I think it's like a euphoria thing that you saw. It's, yeah. um. But yeah, I mean, then so yeah, Ken Rance, one of the writers who was a farmer Minnesotan, whose wife is a dedicated scrapper, and this is someone who, and this is nothing to do with having a fight or anything. <laughs> because for anyone listening from America, a scrap is sometimes um like a scrapbook. Yeah, but yeah. a scrap is sometimes described as a fight. So if somebody gets into a bit of a scrap, and also now this this will this will depend on what part of the country you're in. But when you get fish and chips, Louise, if you, if you mm. ever do, oh, um, we had them last night and that before because there's so much we had them tonight uh, from yesterday as well. <laughs> oh, now you're talking. So <laughs> when um. When actually, I had some chips earlier for my dinner. I had a chicken meal sandwich and I had these proper homemade chips from mm. a local cafe and I was putting them in the sandwich. Oh, lovely. Anyway, um, oh, lovely. You can't beat a good chip sandwich. And then, what was I talking about? Food, obviously. Anyway, so yeah, so the scrapbook thing. Um, oh, yeah, you yeah, asked me about the chip right. when I go to the chip. Okay, so when you go, what do you call the bits you get? That's the, bits. The, is that what you call them, batter bits? We had some of them as well, well I did. Right, okay, so where... Black the and part of the... stuck in a bowl, aren't they? <laughs> oh, part of the country I'm from, we call them scraps. Yeah. Oh, I think, I think oh. we used to call them that when I was at school, actually. Yeah, scraps. I used to call them batter bits. Yeah. yeah, so they say, oh, do you want scraps? Yeah, yeah. I think, I think further up north, like Newcastle way, they call them... I think they call them fish bits or something like that. Because mm. I was like, what would you mean, fish bits? <laughs> And like, oh yeah, that's what I was like. What do you mean scraps? They were like, what? So I, I know they call different things, but well, for we had, uh, uh, basically had a little bit of batter you get. Oh on top yeah. Of your fish and chips. Oh, we had. I um, was hungry. We had a. Uh, well, we had. We had. Well, I think we've got too much actually. That's why we had it today as well. We had a, a cod, um, a haddock, some chips, and a while ago I started to sort of do this. Get a. A cheap kind of mushy peas and just blitz them up yourself to save money. See, now you're just freaking yeah. out the Americans. They can't understand all this mushy peas. <laughs> and um, I, made, I made my own curry sauce as well. So I, I probably saved it. a little bit of money. So I made my, made my own curry sauce as well. See, I hope it's not unprofessional to say, but if things ever go belly up with Marv, you know, <laughs> give, me a, give me a shout. Like, do, this is all made curry sauce. You can't, you can't say that to a bona fide northerner. Oh, no, that's fantastic. To be fair, um, I was because yeah, I was just about to ask that what it would make me a bit of a cougar, though, wouldn't it? <laughs> like 20, 20, 21 year difference. <laughs> it's not well. It's nowhere near Leonardo DiCaprio, is it? What's his like thirty or something? But uh, I can no, send I mean... you the recipe if you like. You know. Oh, feel free. I'd, I'd love Play, to. Alex, I'll email you the recipe tomorrow. Oh yeah, I'll, I'll give that a go. But that yeah, that was going to be my next question about what what's kind of your go to. Like, because for me, like, with fish and chips, so for me, it's like, obviously, I'm northern, so if I was gravy, so, but gravy, I don't really put with chips. I know a lot of people do, but I put gravy I with a lot of other things. cheese and chips thing, isn't there? Yeah, cheese and chips and gravy. Oh, uh, or you, I or like you can get, chips like, and curry sauce, Martin. I, I very rarely have mushy peas, because I'm not really that bothered. I do like them, but I just usually have fish, chips and curry. Uh, sometimes we, you know, make, make chip with teas with the chips. You know, a bit of salt and vinegar, tomato sauce. Mm. I, know, you can. Um, I mean, I think I saved about a 92p making, you know, curry sauce and 
uh, you know, for the sake of an apple, that's all I needed because I've got all the bits and bobs in the cupboard, so all, all I needed was an apple. And the mushy peas were about 45p. Um, so just, you know, gave them a good stir. And I just I just think, you know, because everything's gone up these days. Yeah. Cut a few corners. And I mean, I, I do like making a curry sauce. I mean, you know, if you doubled, if you doubled the recipe or tripled it, you could probably have it with rice as a, as a proper curry, you know. Yeah, like a half and half. Yeah, that's a good shout. That I, I think it's a bit I'll... hot actually, but uh, I'll, yeah, I'll send it. Yeah, it's it's nice. It's cool. It's worth doing. It's, yeah, I think it depends on me what I'm gonna have in terms of. Oh, so that so who's the cod and who's the haddock out of you, Marv? I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna I'm guess. I'm gonna guess. Mm-hmm. I do know. Oh, I, was, I thought would it be a bit stronger, Marv? Might have gone for the haddock. Well, we couldn't. We, I said, well, you know, we're not gonna be able to tell which is which. Um, looking at them, obviously, there's a slight taste difference. I mean, I quite I like haddock probably more, but I, I don't mind either, to be honest. Yeah. Um, uh, I like the batter, and Martin's not a big fan of batter, though. Is he not? Oh, I love it, mate. So the thing is, with, with like, chips, if, if they're proper fish and chip chips, it's either most times curry sauce, occasionally it's it's you can't beat a bit of red sauce, beautiful. Or but both, you, I have to have both. Oh, I don't know, that's oh, risky territory there. <laughs> uh, there's a, uh, you can't let them mix, though. There's a... Uh, <laughs> I've red sauce and red sauce. I've I've like two sauces sometimes. Yeah. Uh, oh, and I like mint sauce as well. I can make mint sauce. See that? Damn. I like mint sauce. Not a big fan of apple sauce, but it's the bit where. Well, um, I like just, that as well. <laughs> it depends in terms of like my mum and my brother love apple sauce, but I've never seen the uh, attraction of it. Um, it's the bit where like you know where you're getting your chips. It depends where they're from as to what I put with them. So like yeah. if I if I get chips later on night, from like a takeaway or whatever. Oh, oh, if you're out and about that, that you're going to get really? garlic sauce with that, which you can't get all over the place. A lot of places don't. don't if you go, oh, okay, garlic sauce, got garlic mayo, they go, what? Just get um, some mayonnaise and add some gar- crushed garlic to it or garlic powder yeah, yeah. to it. Garlic garlic it? Blow me your head off. So there's a bit <laughs> where, um, this, oh God, can you imagine the breath, Jesus? There's a bit where um, it depends. Like, if I'm at like um, somewhere else, like just getting something to eat and you order chips, um, I, I do have a thing for like, Cold coleslaw with chips, that's a bit of a thing. But Ooh. I wouldn't do that for chip shop chips. Or for some reason, the cold coleslaw, creamy cold coleslaw with uh, like chips. Oh, like, oh, I don't wow. know, there's just some of it. I like coleslaw nice as well. This is, say, this, I'm just making myself hungry. So, cheese um, and chips. cheese and chips, I never had that either. I'm not, my, well, I'm not a massive fan of cheese. I don't dislike I don't it. Like, I don't mind. Uh, well, I'm not a big fan. I don't mind pickled onions. Oh, I love pickled like, onions. You know, like in a sandwich with a cheese. Oh, yeah. Oh, now you see it. Oh, God damn it. I have not my tea either. So, oh, yeah. uh, no, no, no. <laughs> this is oh, torture, yeah. damn it. This is torture. Martin said, I wonder if you're having a chippy tea today. Oh, uh, it's too we have one, now, we have, I mean, it's quite expensive to have uh, fish and chips anyway. I mean, we have one in Monster in the Blue Moon as a tree. Yeah. You know. No, it uh, is. So you don't have to be eating it every week, though, do you? No, well, we uh, well, we have fish shop Friday a lot of the time at work, but not 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 every Friday. I think we're down like maybe one a month now. But the 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 nose of the local chippy when we go in, so like oh four cod bites, yeah, yeah. I mean, I reckon you could definitely, yeah, definitely put this curry on your chips. I think, I mean, I think it was a bit. I mean, I went from using mild curry powder to like medium, and it was a little. I mean, do you like? curry sort of bit on the hotter side or milder side i don't mind i mean i would usually go for like a milder but i don't mind if it's got a bit of a kick as long as i know it's got a bit of a kick yeah. like if someone get, gives it to me and says oh i have to some of this curry sauce and i pour it all over and i don't realize it's I'd, although oh okay so before we finish the review before we wrap up the review the the, the because we finished talking about the film oh i've got a twitter i've got a twitter poll as well to read out that martin's cool team. Uh, we'll use that as the end up, but just before okay. we get to that bit, so are you, when you have curry sauce with chips, are you a pourer or are you a dipper? See, I, I, I'm, a lot of the time, I, I don't mind, I like to dip the chips or the fish in the curry sauce in the pot, then occasionally I'll just pour it on. I will put some, I'll put it, put it on the, put some on the plate and I'll dip the chips in it. And if I have a chip butty, I will probably put a bit of curry sauce and red sauce in with it as well, sometimes. But yeah, put it on the plate and dip the chips in. Yeah, can't argue, can you? Um, yes, yeah, sorry, so what was your what was your poll to read out? Right, so Martin did this uh, poll on Twitter and Instagram. Uh, people were asked to pick their favourite Lenny Zellweger film. 
So what, what do you think, Sean, that came out the most popular film that people liked? Of what, sorry? What, what do you think um, was the most popular René Zellweger film in a poll? Oh, did, 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 did Marv put out options? He did, he did it on Twitter and Instagram, that's people, the favourite oh, film. Oh, sorry, of... yeah, I saw it, um, oh, I think, I think oh, Bridget probably came up top. No. Really? Yeah, me, myself and Irene, which I've never seen. Have you not? Oh. No. I've actually, I haven't seen. I actually put Bridget Jones as my. If I, if you're doing a top three, I've actually put the Bridget Jones films as my first, New in Town second, and Jerry Maguire, which I know you haven't seen yet, third. Um, but so, me and myself and Irene um, was liked first by Cinema Trip Reviews. Review it yourself. <laughs> um, I'll do that. Could be. Uh, and Rob from Keeping Up With The Cardassians. Um, she's also done a film called Empire Records, which was liked by Opinionated Lushes podcast. Oh, and yeah. one called Love and, and a 45 by I Seen It podcast. Oh, and, I've just recorded uh, with I Seen It podcast. And just, just some sort of other films that she's been in. Um, Chicago. Not seen All that right. one. Have you seen right. that one? No. Yeah. Jerry Maguire, seen that. Of course, Bridget's, Bridget Jones' a Diary, um, all those the three films. New in Town, Empire Records, Love and the 45, and Leatherheads, which was the one that she was in with George Clooney that I couldn't remember. All oh, right. Funny that, funny that um, Judy never comes up, which I think is like her most critically acclaimed role as of late. Yeah, I didn't like which that was, one. Yeah, no, I heard, yeah. yeah. I don't know why, but I'm not saying that her performance wasn't good. I don't think it was that. I just, I don't know, just something about it I didn't like. Um, don't know. I'm not sure I really enjoyed it that much. Yeah, I know what you mean. But it can't fault her acting. It wasn't the acting. There's just something about it. I just, um, I don't know. Just didn't, didn't. I think it was the maybe it was the script or the story. I don't know. Yeah. But, uh, maybe. Um, but no, I, I've. Have you got any more notes? I think I've done with my notes. No, I've I've done all mine actually. Cool. So yeah, just in summary, a, a very by the book, you know, romant, rom com, really romantic comedy, but it's enjoyable. It's quite sweet. It's it's nice to see a film set in a diff, you know, a little bit different setting, like a little town in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. It was just that kind of small town feel. Would you watch it nice. again? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I think so. Well, I, when I while I was watching it actually, so my my <laughs> my random recommendations goes as this: if I enjoy a film, I really enjoy it, I'd get the DVD. Yeah. Then I'll recommend it. So if I think it's a really good film, I'll recommend it to my dad. And my dad wouldn't want to watch a film like this. But I, I was thinking part way through, like, oh, I'll have to tell Ma about this because she likes Renny Zellweger, and I think she'll really enjoy this one. So I'm glad yeah. you enjoyed it. I did. I, I I was quite confident that you'd enjoy that actually. Yeah, no, I I started watching it, and as soon as I got, you've got to get the tone of it. Like you know, it, it's very. I was watching it at certain points, thinking this might lose some people because it's a little bit goofy. Like yeah. the humor is very out there a little bit, um, a, a kind of a little bit like the Do It Men in Black at times, or kind of a little bit like the, I'm trying to think of a film comparable, but I can't really. The but it, it, the it does have that kind of strange comedy, that kind mm -hmm. of middle America, you know, that middle America thing. Yeah. But I did enjoy it. It, it was it was entertaining. I, I definitely recommend it to people. Um, yeah, I enjoyed it. Um, so what, you, before we wrap up, would you like to tell everybody where you're from and where they can find you? Or if they haven't, from the other five episodes we've done so far. But uh, <laughs> if you'd like to say where you're from. Oh, Pods Like Us. That's the one. Oh, sorry, can I found on all the usual platforms like uh, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok and probably others that I <laughs> forgot to mention. But uh, you know no. where we are. You know where we are. Yeah. Um, but no, thanks to Mark for putting out that poll, and thanks to everybody uh, for some fantastic podcasts in there. Um, thank you for, for for the replies. It's nice to... Well, they're not my replies, of course. I wouldn't have got any. But uh, no, it's nice, it's nice to get the replies uh, for that for that poll. But no, thanks to everyone for listening. Uh, episode 6 
So did we agree? I've written it down, actually. What did we agree to do next? Uh, 47 metres down, was it? Yes, we did. We're going to do a shout Unless you want to change it. I mean, I'm always up for if you ever want to change your mind. It's not It's not like written in stone, you know, you, um, or anything. As long as quite, people know what we're doing. I was quite tempted to, to ask to move back to what lies beneath. I've been okay. looking forward to reviewing that sure. one. Sure, yeah, we'll do that then. Just because it's like, I haven't done it, for, I haven't reviewed it yet, and I, and I really like that film, and it'd be nice to watch it back, you know, like with my podcast glasses on, to be like, oh, this should be Yeah, a we'll thing. do that, we'll do that one then. But, sure. uh, but we can yeah. do the shark one down the line. I've just, I yeah. don't know, I've been, been a bit of a thriller kick lately, so I, I want to give that yeah, one. Yeah, I love a good thriller. I think it's probably yeah. one, of my, one of my favourites uh, yeah. genres, but yeah, I'm up for that. Cool. Well, no, thanks to everyone for listening, and we'll be back with... What lies beneath? Cheers, everyone. Thank you. Thanks, Luke. Thank you very much. Get it in, get it on, and enjoy the flog. Welcome to Film Vloggers. Oh, harder, Daddy. The only film review podcast, thankfully, that poses the question, does watching this film feel like flogging a dead horse? There he is beating that dead horse! Introducing your hosts. First up, her Irish potty mouth turns the air a whole new shade of blue. It's Fiona. Say hello, Fiona. And why the f*** is Dan Mackers doing our intro? I want me gold! That's great. It's great. She's adorable. And your second host needs no introduction. The man, the myth, the legend. Like, I said I'd do this. I said I'd do this for you. I'm not reading this. It's the guy who waffles too much. It's Ben. Cooey! I'm making waffles. So what are you waiting for? Grab your whip, mount your dead horse, and let's get on with the flog, shall we?